But we just came upon our new friend, uh, Major General Dan Ammerman, with the uh, Commanding General of Army Civil Affairs Psychological Operations Command. So what that means is you are in charge of 13,000 men and women who handle, yes. uh, who handle this for our U.S. military, for the Army. Yes. Uh, the uh, Civil Affairs and Psychological Operations Command is part of the Army Reserve, and the Army Reserve provides those life-sustaining and life-saving capabilities that the military needs. Yeah, such an important role. Uh, I spent some time in Iraq, so many of my other colleagues have as well, and saw firsthand the great work that you do. Give us a couple examples of some of the things that civilians might ask you to do that helps bolster the efforts of what our American mission is. Well, going back to, to 2003 when I was there, what we helped do is stand up the, the provincial and local governance again and also provide those essential services uh, to uh, uh, prevent the uh, the people from coming from harm. Things like uh, getting water treatment up and going again, uh, th making sure businesses uh, get operational again, those types of things. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And also, uh, there's a medical component to that as well. For example, if somebody says, you know, my, my wife here uh, needs some, some medical attention, that's something that you help coordinate as well. Certainly. We, we, have, we have experts in, in, uh, in the Army Reserve. We have experts in, in medical, uh, logistics, and, of course, the... Um, uh, you know, transportation field, things like that. Yes. I, I was reading about your bio. You have such an amazing career history. You've been in the U.S. Army for 33 years. You've yes. been deployed all over the place. You also have a civilian component. You work in financial services. What has made you most proud about your time serving in the military? Well, what makes me most proud is just the, the, peop the people I get to serve with. I mean, there's some, some incredible people. Their, their attitude of uh, wanting to serve their country. Uh, some extremely uh, talented and bright people uh, working in the Army Reserve. I, I get to see, uh, just like me, they get to, to apply those privately, uh, uh, private sector acquired skills to uh, service to their country. So uh, it's just a fantastic experience. I was saying to you earlier that I had no idea that uh, someone who serves as a two-star general also could be in the civilian world as well. I would think that's a full-time job. So I guess you have two full-time job jobs then. Yes, I do. Definitely two full-time <laughs> full jobs. Yes. And uh, the Army Reserve has a birthday coming up next week. Tell, tell us about that. Yes, the Army Reserve has its 107th birthday coming up. And it's uh, April 23rd. They were established a little bit before uh, World War One. And in fact, you had mentioned the, the medical component. It started, uh, the Army Reserve started with medical. Uh, and since then has expanded to other uh, civilian acquired uh, skills, including uh, logistics, uh, business skills. Um, uh, as well as uh, 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 military police, those types of things. Yeah, so you need all sorts of people to be involved in doing that job. Sure. Are you, how does it work? How does somebody get into the Army Reserve? Do you have to be in the Army full-time first and then you transfer to the Reserve? Or can you just join the Reserve as a regular civilian at this point? Well, actually, you can do both, and we have we have quite an influx of soldiers right now who are leaving the the, the active component as there's a drawdown, and they move into the Army Reserve, and so it's really great to have that talent and experience coming into the Army Reserve. But in addition to that, we end up growing our own, and so there's also uh, people that uh, are, are working civilian industry that 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 have a, let's say an engineering background or a logistics background or or, or just want to serve, uh, who end up joining the Army Reserve and say, I, I want to contribute to those life-saving and life-sustaining functions that the Army Reserve brings to the military. Uh, General, let me pause you for a minute because we are right outside the Fox and Friends studio and where we have people coming and going right now. John Stossel uh, was just on the show. He is headed by uh, John Stossel from uh, Fox Business Network. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we were just talking about uh, the need that you have and what do you find the need uh, career-wise tends to be right now is greatest for uh, the Army Reserve? Well, the, the, the need is greatest for those who have, uh, first of all, an, an interest in a foreign language is in, in, and uh, interest in learning about other cultures and civil affairs. Certainly, we want people like that. The, the engineering capabilities. Uh, essentially, to be in the Army Reserve, uh, it, it's important to have a, a, a technical skill because what the Army Reserve does is it allows you to further, refine, further hone those uh, civilian acquired, private sector acquired technical skills in service to the military. And it's a benefit then not only on the military side, but if you're a reservist like me, it also helps me on the on the civilian side because I get some additional management experience on the military in addition to my management experience on the civilian side. Okay, so just help me understand this. Let's say there's somebody who's 35 years old, let's say they're 40 years old, and they have a medical background or uh, an engineering background, and they say, hey, I want to join the Army Reserve. Can you do it, or are they too old at that point? 
Uh, it depends on their on their background, but certainly you know go out to the Army Reserve Reserve website or go to an Army recruiter, and uh, we'll certainly do all we take, all we can to bring in because we're looking for talented people uh, to come into the Army Reserve because uh, we have a difficult mission. Yeah, you certainly do a difficult and a very important mission. As I mentioned, I have seen the work that you do uh, overseas, and it is incredible. Not an easy job trying to uh, help people out else uh, all over the world. So, uh, General, thank you so much for your time. We certainly love having you and your men and women here. Well, thank you very much, and I, and I want to just uh, thank all the, the reserve soldiers out there and, their, of course, their families uh, for, for serving. Uh, it, it's just incredible. Thank you. Thank you.